look out. Footy's back, I'll tell you what, after round 19, you better believe it. G'day, I'm David Calthorpe. Wait, no, I'm not. Who? I'm really not. <laughs> David Calthor, might be a little bit before your time there, Stats Boy. I am James Clements, the host here of the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things footy. Joining me for this round 19 is done. We're in the 20s now, Stats Boy. That is wild. It is the Stats Man. Some would call him the Stats Fellow. Some would call him the Little Stats Guy. Hello, Stats Man. Stats Fellow? I've never heard that one before. That does that sounds very odd. Uh, David Calthor, you usually pick good cult heroes, so I, I actually don't know much about him, but I'll back you on this one. Uh, played for a bunch of different teams in yep. the late 90s. Yeah, okay. Also North Ballarat. Oh, North Ballarat. There you go. The Roosters. <laughs> well spotted. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just so this is a big, big, big wrap of the round 19 that was. We're going to break down every single game we're going to talk. We've got a couple of really cool things to talk about because Boys. after this weekend of footy, there is chaos everywhere <laughs> in this ladder, and I'm stoked. So before we get into it, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. YouTube channel. I'll just run those words together. The That'll camel. be more fun. We'll get a camel as well. The just camel. A, just oh. get a camel just walk yeah. in. A man is not a camel, stats boy. Uh, get around all the socials, of course, for AFL Today Show as well. What is it? The Sports Today Show on uh, Facey? Yes. Correct. Outside of that, footy's back. Quick look at the weekend that was. Oh, boy. A lot happened. Oh, boy. A, a lot happened. So we'll get into the ladder wrap in a second. But as I said, we're in the 20s now, stats boy. We are. What does that mean? That it's uh, every game's a final. That's all, that's what everyone keeps saying on the commentary. Every game's a final, which it's pretty it's close to that. Technically yeah. not correct. No, well, technically not. But it feels it's like about it. right. Yeah, yeah. The rubber hits the road. That's what this is because yep. this set of results from this weekend for a team like Collingwood, a team like Gold Coast, it gets really hard really quickly. It does. right now to make it into the eight. The belief is lacking for a few teams that, like out of the eight right now. And you'd be feeling pretty good if, like, I don't know, you're a Dogs fan or something like mm. that, right? Even though you're outside the eight. Momentum. But you're playing probably the best football of anybody? Question uh, mark? Yeah. Maybe Brisbane? At I don't their know. best. We, we said that at the start of the year, the Dogs can be up there, so. Right. Outside of that, we'll get into the letter check in yeah. a second. But Sounds good. But when we're talking results, I'm resultist. I've got a couple of vibes about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I know why. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, the Ginny Revenge. That was awesome. I love this. So, mostly because I hate the pies. Yep. I wear that proudly on the sleeve because, Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm not a Collingwood fan. Yep. And anyone outside of Collingwood fans, for the most part, tends to sort of hate Collingwood, right? That's how it goes. Exactly. But the sheer hypocrisy of this club, of Collingwood, the the booing of uh, of Jack Ginnivan, when they got angry at people for booing him when he was on the pie, Stats Boy. It was so funny. Can you you hear that? Yeah. Oh! It's the sound of hypocrisy. That, oh, you love to see it, it from the boys fans, don't you? They're like, Brayden Maynard's not a war criminal. It's like, <laughs> yes, he is. We're going to trial him in The Hague. It's going to happen. The Hague might just be, I don't know, like a pub in Mooney Ponds, but either way. Yeah, it's booing's all a part of it, but it's just funny how, like, literally they were so against Ginnivan getting booed. Then he goes up to him after he kicks a couple of goals. He's, he says, put, put you to sleep. Put and then the, the, I thought the uh, Pies cheer squad was going to run on the field and just murder him at one point. I was like, Ginny, be careful, mate. You're pretty small. If there's <laughs> One subset of fans that might. Yeah. It's probably like, the pie. You don't see any more people running on the field, but be careful, mate. Nice one. <laughs> All right. That was a fun one. That was a really good one. Yes. We talked about the revenge round. Yes. On Thursday night show. And Guinea got his revenge. We had uh, our man Fisher didn't quite have the revenge no. in the uh, late game. But Draper, uh, the Draper, Draper Bowl, that was a revenge from Adelaide. I'm just saying. Yep. I called it earlier. You did. And I'm like, but where was the flopping on the ball from the Crows? They should have done the, after, no, after the siren. The Crows have a lot more good blokes than Essendon. They wouldn't. They wouldn't do that. I don't know. <laughs> it's a missed opportunity if you ask me. Probably. Outside of that, Laura Kane backing up the judicial system, which is pretty funny. She's doing her job and saying, "Oh yeah, we back everyone." Uh, that wasn't uh, shambles at all last week. It clearly was. You said three weeks for two players, and then oh no, nah, they both can have zero because uh, we didn't read the rules properly and all this kind of stuff. All she had to say there was, "Look, we got it wrong." I think we need to uh, look into it a bit more in the future. I would like to hear that from her. Not, yeah, we're all good. <laughs> the AFL's continuous doubling down yeah. on their own it's weird. boneheaded, mm. wildly avoidable mistakes yep. is one of the things that makes me just go from a top level down, go, hey, can we just stop being so bush league? Mm. This is ridiculous. Laura can go, no, no, no. Nothing to see here. Yeah. It's basically fine. Her job it is comes to down say to Andrew Gill and Dylan. Exactly. Go, umpires, they're doing a great job. Everyone's yeah. like, dude, do you have two eyes? 
in your head? Do they work? And he's so, like, sometimes. I don't have to answer that question, do I? Yeah. So you're a lawyer. Play the fifth. Play the fifth. Basically, oh, the point being, the AFL can't get out of its own way. Yes. And it seems very easy to get out of its own way sometimes, exactly as you said, Stats Boy, to go, hey. It can be, yeah. We are trying to fix this system. Just We're be honest. We're trying to yeah. figure out yeah. how to balance out the health of the game mm-hmm. uh, and player health. And like we're trying to make sure we hit a happy middle ground for everybody. It is very difficult. We understand that and we're trying to get there. They don't say that. No. They go, no, we're right. We're, we're it's like, good. You're not right. <laughs> You're wrong. You keep being wrong because I don't know who's in charge there, but it's very dunderheaded. What are you doing? Dunderheaded is a great word. That is, yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, you, you like to use that one. Anyway, that's an early of, vent sesh. Just a build up to vent sesh. Yeah, later. I've still got more vents. Yeah, I know. It's a long vent session. <laughs> Jimmy, you going hard early? I think so. It's like me on the tins. We're only on quick look. Anyway, uh, long outside look. of this, Ken Hinckley apparently got stuck into Charlie Dixon, which I, I loved. And yeah. he responded in a big way on the weekend. I, just, I read that literally this morning. And uh, yeah, Ken, the last couple of weeks, said, I've got to pick a fight with some players. That, that was his exact words. I love it. No that. one is ever wanting to pick a fight with Charlie Dixon, except for me on this podcast. But if I saw him in the street, I'm running the other way. He's a big man. But Ken, Ken said, Charlie, you've been crap. If you want to play in the ones, you've got to lift. And he he, set, he got into him. And then Charlie was awesome on the weekend. All right, next gather round, we are going to stage a boxing match. <laughs> Charlie Dixon versus the Stats Boy. He's like the biggest guy in the AFL. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, man, you talk trash. You're going to be able to take it out. Yeah. What are we doing here? Well, if every uh, journalist out there that would talk trash had to fight someone, then there'd be a lot of cooked journalists, like I'm including yourself. Happy. I'm not a journalist. I'm not a big J well, journalist. Actually, not the, uh, not the right word. Content creator. Content. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> just, there we go. Uh, I'm just some dude. Uh, I'm not an L- AFL commentator, apparently. Yeah, well, I, either am I. I don't want to be called an AFL commentator. Uh, and then finally, this is the quickest look of quick looks, but Sydney have lost their four games so it's a far worry, yeah. this season by nine total points. <laughs> You're like, wow, that's pretty close. Yeah, they're also 0-4 in games decided by less than a goal. Ooh. Do Sydney have a clutch problem? That's not good in the finals because so many games are decided by a goal. <laughs> are they Are they going to go out in straight sets? There's no Alex, so we can back Sydney a little bit. No, I think no, I'm Sydney, they're as, okay. as the best team in the last 150 years that we've seen, <laughs> uh, I think they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They that, are still, Brisbane are a great team at home. They are still walk-in winners of the AFL Premiership, if you ask me, the Sydney Swans. They're still the best team, yeah. I agree. To be honest, I was trying to explain this. So... Before we get into the ladder check, I have a very, you know, we're all in, we're, we're in Victoria. This is how it happens, right? Oh. Our extended families are usually footy fans. Yes. Uh, and so my wife's family, Essendon supporters, they can't help that. It's their own fault. Yeah, what are you going to do? Happens. But the great grandmother still hanging out in her mid 90s now. It's like, oh, what's wow. the problem with Essendon? Well, I have some thoughts. <laughs> but mostly, she's just a guy. Like, she's just amazed by how. Uh, completely across the board, that this, how even this season has been. Oh, it's great. Yeah. And it makes sense. She would have seen a lot of seasons of footy and she would exactly. this would be right up there. Yeah. And it's very kind of cool. And I enjoy this a lot. Mm. And trying to explain the Sydney sort of like little blip on the radar mm. that's happening right now where they've lost three and four games. Wow. And so they brought back some dudes. It got changed. They lose Justin McInerney. They didn't have Roe Bottom this week. Our good friend, yeah. friend of the show. He's, he's a big cog in their, uh, in their works. And it's maybe just like this is what happens. Really good teams have these little blips. You had the 2000 Bombers lose famously one game. You had the 95 Blues lose two yeah, games. It doesn't happen anymore where a team's going to lose less than three or four games. It's exactly. so even the comp. It just so. happens. Yeah. So don't worry, Sydney. You're going to win the flag. It's going to be fine. <laughs> With that in mind, let's do the round 19. The ladder la- check. Here we go. On top of the ladder. Still there. The Sydney Swans. They're which, still eight points up, so they're So right. this was kind of my, I was, uh, I had the my five-year-old. He's like, the squid. He's like, Dad, who do we want to win? I'm like, well, I've tipped Sydney. But now I think about it, I really want Sydney to win, even though Alex is there at the Gabba and it would be the funniest thing <laughs> oh. if they lost. And oh. I re- I came to a very stark realisation, Stats Boy. Yes. I should be tipping the way my heart Demand. I feel like you do that a bit already. I already do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I galaxy brain. I galaxy brain pretty hard. Nah, nah, you, you're pretty. Uh, but had I thought this about about this for more than a second, I'm like, wait, Alex will be there. 
I need to tip Brisbane because that's way funnier because Alex will be in Brisbane at the Gabba and to have his heart broken oh. is way the, easily the funniest outcome, but right? They, they've won enough games this year. That's how this goes. The same thing with Adelaide and Essendon on the weekend. Yes, that was, that was very funny. The funniest outcome is Essendon going to this as massive favourites and losing. Now that you mentioned that, I think the funniest outcome has happened a lot this year because every team is this just is can't what's win. Going, this is what I'm saying. Maybe I from keep, now on you should do that. I keep saying the funniest outcome. And then you don't tip them. I illuminate it and then I don't <laughs> Tip it. Because yeah. apparently, again, remember, tick the box over here, actual idiot. <laughs> anyway, Sydney, 14 and 4. They're still fine. They've lost those four games. Mm. As I said, by all, all by under a goal. Yeah. That, all those results could have been their way. But clutch issue, maybe. Maybe. Lost three of the last Who four. Who would be like their clutch player? Maybe Papley could sneak for a goal. Well, or Papley also got injured. So. He got injured as well, yeah. Uh, the, as I said, though, the most annoying outcome of this one for Carlton, as a Carlton fan, was Brisbane winning because it mm. puts them right there behind the Blues. They are so close uh, now, yeah. Whereas if Sydney keep winning, who cares? They're on top of the ladder, right? Yeah, like, no one's going to catch them so, now, yeah. Yep. Uh, anyway, Sydney very clearly on top of the ladder at 56 points. Carlton back in the second spot on 48. They're yep. 12 and 6. Right the ship after two losses in a scratchy, scrappy, gross. Yeah, just got to go to the line in those ones, I guess. A win where it's like that was almost, it feels like a loss, <laughs> yeah. but you won it. Yep. But you that's won. A, that's the Carlton way. <laughs> I'm resultist though, stats boy, so you I'll are. take oh, the Oh, you win. won. I can't say Brisbane that. a third on 46 with Fremantle on 46 as well. They're both 11, 6, and 1. How good are draws? Beautiful. They're just great. They're are very they? handy because, to be fair, they both got decent percentage because uh, Freo they got do. to play Melbourne twice and absolutely smash them. Um, but, yeah, draws are very handy at the moment. Pretty good if you can play your bunny team twice in a year. <laughs> then we have GWS, Geelong, and Port all on 44 points, <laughs> all on 11 and 7. All pretty tight in terms of their percentage as well. Well, GWS are 112 now after a big win, but 106.8 for the Cats after a loss to the Dogs and the Power 106 after yep. a uh, pretty handy win over Richmond, but it could have been and probably should have been bigger. But that's the top seven, right? So if you think about this, this is two through seven separated by... One, one win. Point. Yeah, one, one, sorry, win. one win, not one point. Yeah, One, one win. single win. Unbelievable. A win separates second through seven. Mm -hmm. Amazingly enough, Essendon are by themselves in eighth. Still in the eight. Because of that draw. Because of the draw. Because they're, they're the only team in the top, what is it, 12, under 100 percentage. So that is a real worry. So I believe they started the season eight, three, and one. They are now 10, seven, and one. Well, wasn't it last year they were fifth uh, heading into round 16 and they didn't make finals. So it could be a replay of last year. Which is very funny. I didn't say it. Yeah, I I'm said just it. saying I, it was. I can't stand it. The stats boy. You still, you still think they're one of the best teams? <laughs> one of the best teams in the AFL. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've never doubted that. Even what if they make finals? They're incredible. They, uh... like, one of the best teams in the AFL. <laughs> yeah, the Essendon Bombers <laughs> from the northwest of Melbourne. Yep, I'm, I'm out there. Yeah, they're, we go. they're great. <laughs> Western Bulldogs sit in ninth because they're what confident. just happened? They got dubbed. They've won twice in a row again. What is going on? In back-to-back -back weeks. So the last time they did this, they won two games in a row, but there was a buy separating that, mm. which counts in their brain as a loss. So, <laughs> yeah. well, we won oh, we, two weeks ago. We'll get another we one. lost. Oh, we better win this one. Now they've won back-to-back -back games against Carlton and Geelong. We talked about this on Thursday night. Show stats board. Yes. This was a huge win for the Dogs because it puts them on 40 points. That is equal with Melbourne and Hawthorne. So 9, 10, 11 right now on the ladder. You are literally one win away from sneaking up and staying in the eight. Yeah, you could go top six. Yeah. You can jump ahead of Essendon very, very quickly. But if GWS, Geelong, or Port Falter next week and the Dogs win, Dogs have a hard run Sydney, home. But... Sydney game next week, which mm. is very tough. But yeah. hey. You never know. Best time to get Sydney, I reckon. Yep. The Dogs, that was probably the best win of the season. Well, uh, best win of the week, rather. We'll talk about that in yes. a second. Melbourne yep. got shellacked. They have a 101.4 percentage, which is hilarious. To rewind it, <laughs> Essendon in the eight with a 98.7%. That is yeah. I only under hundred. That's wild. It. Anyway, so we have the dogs, the demons, and the hawks on forty. That is all the way down to eleven. So that is still two wins separating hawks two are charging. 11. Yeah, yeah. Hawks are the form team, basically the comp. They are. Brisbane. Which is crazy. Then we come. Then we get to the very interesting part. Twelve and thirteen. I the think Gold Coast cooked. Suns cooked. and the Collingwood Magpies. The Suns are nine and nine. The Pies are eight, eight and two. It gets really, really, really hard. So because as we just said though. The Dogs, if you win, you're pushing into the eight. Yep. Melbourne win, same thing. Hawthorne, amazingly enough, for a team that started 0-7 this year, you win, you're pushing into I the eight. I really want Hawthorne to make it somehow. The Suns and the Pies have to somehow basically make up 
two wins yeah. on other teams at this point. That's a win are, on the weekend, I think, to give them a chance because they're cooked now. Because you can look at this and go, oh, we're only six points out of the eight. That's one and a half wins, though. But there's like four teams ahead you of You can't them, win so. half a game, Stats, man. Exactly. exactly. You've got to win two. <laughs> you can't. When one of these teams doesn't win one. Tell North Melbourne that. We're always leading the half. There's time. only five weeks left. <laughs> How are you going to do it? It gets really, really hard. Just win every game. Come on. Outside of that, then you've got the Crom. It gets a bit sad from that. Adelaide yeah. and 14th at 7, 10, and 1 after a famous win over the uh, Bombers <laughs> on the weekend. Famous. Talk. They're so good. Adelaide beat Carlton and yeah. Essendon at Marvel this you, you year. You know I talked them up at the start of the year? What they, are we doing? At their best, they're a bloody good team. They've got all these guns. You're like, they should be in the finals. Oh, oh no, no, we're going to just go 14th again. Come on. They boy. have the best percentage of any team oh. outside of the eight apart from the dogs. That's incredible. They're better than 14th. St. Kilda on 28 points. They're in 15. Then you have the the sad, the sad, sad, three. sad yeah. triumvirate I'm of uh, West Coast on 12. <laughs> Uh, at 3 and 15, it is incredible, actually, that the line from 15th, which is St Kilda, it's 7 and 11. <laughs> it's four wins. And then the next three teams are 3, 15, and 2 and 16. Brutal. And the bottom two teams are, of course, North and Richmond. Yeah, we don't need to talk to Tigers fans, it's a safe space. You've won three flags. Yeah, you'd still be pretty happy. You would be. But their future is a bit My of a My question, wave. though, for you, Stats, man, before we get into Vance Ash. Mm-hmm. The way that the Tigers fans carried on. When? On the weekend? No, just oh. in general. Yeah. <laughs> they won three flags. That's exactly. Pretty, it's pretty three, good. Three flags. So there's a famous uh, famous quote about Dr- so Draymond Green going to Paul Pierce. You thought you was Kobe? Yeah, yeah. You thought you was Kobe? Because Paul <laughs> Pierce is complaining about not getting like a farewell to Farewell, him yes. When he's yes. on like the Wizards or whatever. What? Having her on the Clippers, like after he's already played yeah. for Boss uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clippers, he was already right? cooked by then, yeah. Yep. And Dram was like, you thought you was Kobe. <laughs> Richmond, the way that their fans have just gone, peace. Well, that would, yeah. Richmond as well. They're, literally a couple of years ago, they'd, you, they'd get sell out every game. They're the biggest fan base. They've lost a lot of fans as you have. I think what it does, though, is just shine a light on how hard it is to sustain success in mm. the AFL. Hawthorne did it for a decade. Geelong have done it for Geelong, Sydney. 15 years. Geelong have done it for... Well, Sydney have basically done it now for like 20, 20 years. years. On Geelong's done right? it for like 15, 20 years. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But Richmond very are like, we're really good. Look at this. They came Crash from out burn. of nowhere and they're just like the dizzy, dizzy highs. Yes. And now the treacly, treacly lows. Well, that I feel like that's what's supposed to happen in sport because you're trying to go all in, but then Sydney, Geelong, and uh, who else did we say? But uh, this is- Yeah, they're well, just Sydney, allies. Sydney, yeah. Geelong. Hawthorne. 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 Yeah. West Coast have had the same sort of thing. Collingwood. They win a flag in 2018. Collingwood Massive had like trouble. these. Mm. Collingwood were like what on bottom of the ladder like four years ago. Then they win a flag a couple of years later. Yep. It's kind of like the natural order of things to have a Richmond thing. We have like a sustained period of success over like half a decade, and then it all falls apart. Yep. It is remarkable though that Geelong, Hawthorne, Sydney, those teams have just been that good for that long. Yeah, so it's just crazy. Shine a light on that. Crazy. All right. That was last. <laughs> is the show? Is the show done yet? Peace. Let's go. No. <laughs> Vensesh, fraud watch. Vensesh. Uh, really quickly, this is like a little addendum to fraud watch. In the back, is that a thing still? Well, oh, there's about there's about four rules that don't pay. Anything. In the back, in danger is not a rule anymore. So throwing is, is also not a not a rule. Throwing, like we've talked about, uh, you know, illegal disposals and stuff like that yeah, this year. That's been all year. Holding the ball, etc. Yeah, and I hate talking about it. I feel like there was a massive, massive, massive focus on like if you fall into somebody, basically even in their back region, if they've got the ball this week, yeah, it's in the ball, it's in the back, yeah. And this, like, we're just not paying it now. Okay. No, it's fine. It is weird. Sure, just I'm, I'm we're just, the only sport that it feels like we change our normal rules every week. But anyway, can we just get like a normal round, just like yeah. umpiring? Anyway, <laughs> no. Uh, the vent sesh, the fraud watch this week is Brad Scott. Everyone will. At this stage of the season, Stats Boy. I didn't even see you said this. Get really attached to results. That's wait, your job, mate. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Ring, ding, <laughs> yeah. ding, 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 ding. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, it's round 19, Brad Scott. I think we should be getting attached uh, to results because people will get to attach to results, Brad. They will because if you keep losing, you're not going to fight. Exactly. It's Bad if you lose. Sport oh. is a results business. What is he talking about? Oh, it's about the process. Yeah, that's that. If the process leads to losing, then it's a bad exactly. process as exactly. well. And the results stink. Like no one's saying, Clarko's Call not saying that. Call me a little bit resultist. 
<laughs> but if you keep losing, uh, I'm going to be like, what's up with that? Yeah. Why, like, why no one's going to go, oh, they lost, but they, they tried really hard, didn't they? And, and we don't have to worry about results because Essendon, oh, we're not going to win a final anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I think he's a really good coach, Brad Scott, but he, he, he did this at North. He would say the weirdest, him and Chris got a very sooky to the media a lot of the time. So they come to the media and just whatever's in their head, they say, just keep it in your head, mate. Don't say those type of things. But Chris Scott is so much cooler than Brad Scott. Yeah, he, he's got the salt and pepper beard. He's got the divorced dad you think vibes. He's, he I get, love it. Gets all the women he's, just, he's just like, <laughs> how, how are you going? You all right? <laughs> How good's tonight at Lammy's? <laughs> Lammy's. Don't have a dance. <laughs> and away you I don't goes, think he'd right? get let it into Lammy's. That'd be, that'd be funny. And But Brad Scott coming out and he's like, it, you see him now do a press conference and it's basically like, wah, 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 wah. I knew you were going to say Wah, wah, wah. And you're like, oh, he just has a bit of a sook, doesn't he? He does, he does. Because like their entire point about like, oh, you're being resultist. It's like, yes, because you keep doing weird things. But that's sport. That's every it's sport. It's like you brought in Goldstein. You keep Caddy in the team. Awesome. Love that. That was good, yeah. Caddy's great. Goldie's horrible. Like, what are we doing yeah, here at this point? He's too slow now. Two meter Peter's like, what did I do, bro? Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, this six. Like, but you can't come into this sort of like uh, this press conference and go, oh, yeah, just you guys have just been too results based. You've lost three of four. Did they have to? Like, they have to question on? that. Did they even question results of North got, and they read the bottom of the ladder. They got smashed by Geelong. They lose a horrible game to Melbourne, mm. who have just been beaten from pole to post. They just the had a, yeah, that was an outlier. And then. They lose a uh, heartbreaker to Adelaide. Yeah, I think we allow we can be allowed to be a little <laughs> bit resultist, Brad Scott. Yeah, I agree. Just saying. Come on, mate. Flog. Uh, <laughs> it also leads me to the pies a little bit. They won three finals by 12 points. Yep. I put this to the group chat on the weekend. Flea McFly. <laughs> Is he? There we go. He has, a, he has a lot of buzzwords. Yeah. Yeah, you did say this. And people say, oh, just so much passion. It's like, is it? Or is it just corporate buzzwords that he's throwing out there where you're like, you know, he just, <laughs> and then it just turns into these like beige he words. He has cliche sort of terms like, as well, yeah. Like, we're all out in it, in it for each other and like, bup, and you're like, you're not saying anything while <laughs> like, you're talking. Is he not a good coach? Nah. This is it. Fraud. <laughs> Oh, I'm did, not saying that. Did the Pies luck into a flag last year? They were incredible. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> they did, however, win three finals by a total of 12 points. They also had Darcy Moore actually do something. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. It was Nathan Murphy and stuff like Nathan that. Nathan Murphy. But yeah. if they miss finals this year, which is looking increasingly likely, it'd be the first time in 52 years, Stats Boy, that we've had the reigning premiers fail to make the finals. Wait, is that right? Back to oh, back, back to back. Years. Yes, yes. Geelong didn't make it last year. Mm. It's actually happened pies. a lot in the last 10 years. The Dogs didn't make it. Uh, the, to, to be fair, the losing team of the grand final often doesn't make it because exactly. they're like shattered. Yep. But yeah, there you Premiership go. hangover. Not good. Too many tins. <laughs> Can relate. Never, never. Can relate. All right. We've got time for game wraps? Let's do some game wraps. <laughs> we'll fly through a bunch of these because some of them are very interesting. Some of them they, are. Yeah, they're awesome. Stuff. Some awesome games. Friday. This game was absolutely fantastic. Maybe the game of the year, question mark, stats boy. Yeah, I chucked that in there. Extremely attacking. High scoring. You got 113 uh, Essendon, 115 Adelaide, obviously. Came down literally to the last kick, pretty much. Uh, intense. Just, I thought it was awesome. No, there was no defense. It was sort of like an all-star game. Just going back and forth, back and forth. Awesome. One yeah, of you know games. how I love my worms. Yes, I, I I did write that in here. That's probably the best worm this you ever This has seen. one of the great worms. <laughs> yes. One of the great AFL.com. We might have to put the – can we screenshot that worms. off the AFL? I don't know. I love this worm. Yeah. It is just like ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. It's like, worm, <laughs> buddy. We're up, you're up. We're up, you're up. We're up, you're up. It's like my brain waves when I'm listening to the Menzingers or something. It's like, <laughs> it's like chaos. Um, but this game had sort of everything, right? Like the way that the Crows – Took it to Essendon. Mm. Essendon fought back. Seemingly took the Bombers by surprise. Yeah. And then, like, the way that the Crows fought back to at just the end, snatch yeah. it right oh. at the end was absolutely absurd. Unbelievable. Because, like, Rishali, they were up by, like, what, 35? 35, 35. I think it was six goals. So six then, goals, right? Then Essendon put, kicked six goals in order to get it back. And then uh, then they were up by three or four goals, Essendon. And then Adelaide go, nah, we're going to go on another run. So it was just run, run, run. Both teams just had really strong uh, defenses for 10 minutes. And then the next 10 minutes, they'd just be horrible. I don't know what but was that's going That's kind on. of the thing. Like, their defenses across the board, it was so both bad. these teams sort of stink, well, sneakily. But they have Adelaide, these moments. Adelaide, stats-wise, don't. They're like the fourth best. But 
But you they, never, their players don't, yeah. I feel like a lot of that sort of stuff is a lot of these random games they've played at Adelaide yeah. Oval where they've killed someone like St. Kilda True. or something. And and, like, or West Coast where they demolish yeah. them earlier in the season. Their two key backs actually got injured. Murray and was it Butts or I can't remember who the other one was. Both were injured. Yep. And so they were very undersized. So that's why Essendon sort of got on a bit of a run as well. And this is it. So it was back and forth the entire game. Uh, ben Keys played the game of ben his Keys life. Ben Keys' legacy game. So <laughs> that, was, that was unbelievable. Five ben goals. Ben Keys is like, hey, uh, can we – like negotiate my contract again. He was like unbelievable. Every, every time they were getting it inside 50 in that last quarter, it was through Ben Keys. It came off for a bit. He looked like he was injured. It's like, get me back on. It came straight back on, set up another goal. And then Rochelle's clutch goal, the uh, James Heard celebration where James Heard just uh, uh, cut the crowd, <laughs> cut the guy in the crowd. That Adelaide supporter was going nuts. I love That's this awesome. game specifically because of like Rochelle, I hate his haircut. Yeah, it yeah great hair. He's got more hair on his eyebrows yeah, than his hair. Yeah, great hair. And now he doesn't. What yeah. are you doing? Josh, sort that out. There's no mullet anymore. Flip side, Riley. Phil Thorpe, aka Thrill Thorpe, he all-time had, legend. He adds that all-time extra legend. Size, yeah. God, he's Beast. good. He's an absolute menace. Yep. He's a monster down there. I love it. Fogarty was fantastic. Kick four, like, but Thrill Thorpe for me, he just every time it went near him, like the bomber's like, oh my god, I don't. He's just do a beast. You want to tackle like he, him? He has that extra him. element, bringing it to ground. He's athletic. It's awesome. For the bombers, Langford probably wasn't quite good enough. Uh, you had, um, yeah. He, he missed. Oh, he, he was missed. okay, but I mean, they kick what yeah. one goal, one goal, two on four or five set shots late in yeah. the game. Yeah, and Langford missed another shot in the last quarter, similar to that Collingwood game, and similar to another game. Shocking. Yeah. Not clutch by Langford. Stringer did very little. It felt like it, yeah, like it's one of those Stringer horrible. games where you're watching and go, he's up and about, but he's not getting the ball. He only got one touch stinks. in the last quarter and a half. Stringer. Uh, but outside of that, like, what a fun game. Nick Cox kicked three goals randomly. Not yep. sick. It was awesome. Man. Uh, Harrison Jones got kicked the first two goals of the game. and didn't... Well, you got 34 goals in a game. That's just that's just fun. It was 40. awesome. Yeah. Uh, but Rochelle, was fantastic. Just get a proper haircut. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're boring me. Just don't be boring. Yeah. You're Josh Rochelle. You're awesome. Believe in yourself. Yeah. I believe in you. <laughs> you believe in you. How are the two fan bases feeling after this one, Stats Man? Well, I already pretty much said how Adelaide's feeling because I have a soft spot for Adelaide. They're like, why couldn't we do this all year? That was probably the most exciting footy anyone's ever played all year, but they do it once every eight weeks or something like that. It's so brutal. they did a way, they did it against Carlton and Essendon at Marvel, which no one gave them a chance of winning. Oh, they won both. They're a good team. They just, I don't I'm know certain. what's going on there. Yeah. Uh, and then Essendon. Yeah, so you if you think about some of these random, so Adelaide fans, as you said, like they've they just, just got to be wildly yeah. frustrated mm. with this season because got a good like, team. they lose to Richmond. <laughs> like some weeks at home, ago. at home, at home, yeah, just a horrible game. Yep, they lose, or they absolutely obliterated West Coast, as we yep. talked about, right? They lose to Collingwood in a really close one, they tie with Brisbane, they beat Port in a showdown. Like, some of those results are pretty good. What but... are we doing? <laughs> yeah, they so beat weird. Carlton, they beat Essendon away. They, beat, they only beat top eight teams. They nearly beat Essendon twice, yeah, like they should have beaten them in that Draper flop exactly. in the ball game, but they didn't, that. yeah. It is the weirdest season of any team, I reckon, in the comp. Yeah. That, Apart from maybe the Pies. But at the same time, you look at that and go, injuries, injuries, injuries. Injury. Adelaide, Adelaide doesn't have that like, many injuries. What? What to be fair, they? if Rankin was back, they would have been better. But they they should they won, so awesome effort. And for the Bombers, they're like, yep. It's happening again. <laughs> the triangle. It's yep. the triangle. Build up your hopes. <laughs> Hope. Uh, uh, realize <laughs> it's all never going to change. Back to the start. <laughs> they go. And then say, next year we're going to make finals. I love it. Brutal. There's nothing better. It's like they start to believe again, get your hopes up. Is their streak of 20 years without winning a final going to continue? That's the I big question. I put that to you, I think, two weeks ago, didn't I? I think even if they make it from here, they won't win a final. Interesting. Mm. Considering they, were, they didn't drop out of the top four until last week, this is... <laughs> well, they would have been second. They could have been second for like a little bit over the weekend. And now, uh, where are they right now? Nine. Well, they would have been second, yeah. yeah. Well, they're eighth at the moment. They would have been Sorry, second eighth, yeah. had they have won on Friday for a little bit before Carlton overhauled them. But uh, instead, Brutal. they did not... And if they had have won, they would still be in equal third, fourth, fifth with uh, Brisbane and yes, Frio. Yes, which so. they would be laughing, but no good. Having no good. Knowing a lot of Essendon fans, as you do yeah, as well. Uh, yeah, I'm surrounded by The vibes are hilarious. Yes. Saturday, the Expansion Cup. GWS just smashed Gold Coast. Because where was this, Stats Boy? Uh, obviously below the 28th parallel, the 28th That's latitude right. line. What the hell, Gold Coast? Dim is like... What they were amazing last week. I just want to say that from the start. I have that, never uh, come up with. A, I've oh. quite literally never come up with a better theory in my life. I I think do actually they play? I've got a, I've got a lot of theories, but this one is one of the best. <laughs> so the twenty eighth parallel, very clearly for the oh. Suns, is undefeated. Old Coast, what are you doing? They just go. They just duck down to Western Sydney, yeah. and they get 
smashed. They only scored 50. So 50 that, points that's that, that I said a couple of weeks ago of them scoring 50 plus less points every time they play away. They always score 110 plus at home. They only scored 50. Last week, their pressure was amazing. They had Kingy scoring goals, Long always scored goals at home. Humphreys, where the hell were they? they Sam were Flanders had 43 disposals. And I didn't even notice him that much. <laughs> <And they, laughs> Whitfield had 40. He Tom was Green really had 34. Swallow had 28. Like, what are we doing? But the <laughs> thing is, away from home, Noah Anderson had 27 touches. Okay, he was good, yeah. But had this just, like, three just brutal clangers and ends up with, like, a fantasy score in, like, the Super 80s. Good. Oh, So really? for both. So, yeah, right. Uh, not great away from home. Just Noah frustrating, Anderson. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Hogan was really good. He's back in the Coleman race. Obviously, Hogan kicked four. Obviously, uh, Charlie did pretty well against the against North just then, but Hogan's kicked, what is he, four, four or five? So he, yep. he's right back in the Coleman race. He had four goals and then uh, six marks inside 50. He was unstoppable. But I think the biggest thing for me for GWS is a win like this, where you win by like 49 points, you just put him to the yep. sword, right? You don't let him back in the game. It's contested footy. It's just like nonstop. We know the Suns. Bruce free footy. Yep. That's what they do. And GWS went right. Hard at the contest. We'll just slop it up, boys. They're getting the stakes out there, just tipping all the water over. Slop <laughs> yeah. it up. Just slop it up, boys. It was good. And it's exactly what happened because if you look at the Jesse Hogan four outside of that, yeah, Toby Green kicked two. Yep. Yeah, Brent Daniels kicked two. Actually, Toby Green kicked a scissor kick sort the of goal. That was, was really awesome. cool over his head, yeah. Outside of that, though, it was kind of everybody else. Harvey Thomas, Riccardi, Perryman, McMullen, Darcy this Jones. what they did at the Cabin, start of the year. Exactly yeah. what yeah. I was trying to say. Oh, they, at go. the start of the season, this is what it was. It was the tsunami. Yep. It just it's back. It comes from comes Whoa. from everywhere. <laughs> Bleep that one. <laughs> it comes more. from everywhere, right? The you just tsunami, fight up from it the just tsunami. hits and hits and hits and hits and hits. And you don't know where, but it's there. Yep. And it's the tsunami. So uh, great win by the GWS Giants. How are the did two, it easy. How are the two fan bases feeling, Stats Man? Uh, GWS were just, they're ha really happy, obviously, because they're back into four and they're back into the top six. They've just been like, why did we have that little patch? Because they, they probably should be top four. They were awesome at the start. Now they're awesome at the end. If they had that middle patch, they'd be top four. So they're just really happy that they're seeing their style of footy, scoring a lot of goals. That's what you want to see. It's a big, big sound. Big, big sound. Uh, and the Suns, I mean, the fan base will be like, can we just play every game at home? Oh, please. Because it's getting to the point it's where it's a psychological thing, right? It has to be, right? They're, they're a good, they have enough good players. Their list is really good. Every year they get really close to finals, probably the last five or six years ago. Suns are finally going to make their first ever finals campaign and now they're going to cook it again. So I don't they think they have, can make it from here. They have an amazing test this week at home against Brisbane. Yes. So if oh, they, can, if they I, win do that. Do I tip them? Oh, do I tip them? Because they're at the home. 20th, above I think the 20th I have to, parallel. By law. Yeah. So in terms of like, <laughs> so they just manhandle the power yep. last week. Week prior to that, lose to your roofs. North, ruse. exactly. Yeah, what the hell? Week before that, beat Collingwood at home. Yeah. Week before that, lose in Frio. Week before that, have that horrible game against the Saints that basically didn't exist. Before that, they had the win over Essendon. Lost to Carlton. The smashing of Geelong. Yeah, talk they about, smashed Geelong at home. And then, well, in the Northern Territory. Still, so like, what it's the It's just hell? one of these things where you like, talk about weirder, weirder seasons, oh. like, the Suns are right there, and it's hilarious. If you so. just watched a couple of Suns home games, you're like, they're the best team in the comp, yep. and then definitely not. Tough one for Suns fans, yes, including me. Jed Walter was uh, out there. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do that much. I it's love him. He cut his, cut his hair off. What is he doing cutting his hair? Brutal. I still reckon it's his dad just, you know, just doing something. <laughs> what, going, or, what have you done? his real yeah, dad. <laughs> Footy dads. Coming to Netflix uh, soon. He had six touches. <laughs> Ugh, brutal. Uh St Kilda, they smashed West Coast 113-41. Remember Tim Memberberry? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, kick five. Kick did he? No, no, I knew he kicked five. Remember? Remember when he kicked five? It was great, yeah. Uh, Mason Wood kicked three goals, four. I think I tipped four. You did, actually. You said he's going to fight. He was awesome, though. He had he 20 touches. So Even Memberry, I think, had 23. Like, Dude, that's rare for him. Like, that, like, Mason Wood, when uh, Max King's not there, mm. I'm just all over it. Like, he's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, any other stats there, stats man from this I just, game? Because I, uh, I watched this like in, intertwining with the GWS goal. So Coast did game. I actually, uh, and uh, it was brutal. It was brutal. The first sort of quarter and a half, West Coast were in it, but then Saints are like, well, it's sometimes okay. So at home, especially under the roof, they're really good under that. Saints had forty-two to fourteen tackles inside their forward half. So that pressure. really good pressure from uh, Mason Wood and Memory weren't just getting a lot of the ball. They were getting a lot of turnovers and things like that. I think you had Dan Ballard a lot of chase down tackles, which Saints fans have probably wanted to see all year because their defense is always strong under Ross Lyon. But that forward half pressure, Jack Higgins always is pretty good at forward half pressure, but a lot of their other guys haven't been. So they'll be really happy with that. 72 point win. You had 31 touches for Steele and Sinclair. Rowan Marshall yes. dominated. 
Sure. Sinclair's had an awesome finish to the Zach season. Zach Jones came in and had 26, which is amazing. That, that shows how uh, bad West Coast are gone if you let Zach Jones. Tim Kelly had 24. Uh, just, I don't know. What can you really read against a team beating the head in of West, like a West Coast Eagles team that just sort of stinks? I'd say we, I know West Coast obviously above North and Richmond, but in terms of form, they're the worst team at the moment. They've lost, just lost their coach. So I asked that question. Yeah. Like, is Schofield going to get them a Schofield going to get a win this season? I don't think so. No. Uh, how are the two fan bases feeling after this one? St Kilda fans like, <sighs> did we need to win that? Uh, Tanking would they, have been, but like this yeah. is probably the last little happy blip for the Saints fans this season. Like they're not going to play finals. We get no. that. Um, they're similar to Adelaide. It's like we should be so much better than this. I I'm feel very like they, frustrated. What St Kilda should be leaning into is playing absolute spoiler. They play Essendon next week, and the funniest thing in the world, one hundred percent, would be. The Saints beating Essendon. They actually match up really well against the Bombers, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Eagles fans would be like, "Can we?" I think they've got a derby next week, and they they did and they, they could they, they could beat Frio, which <laughs> no, would be I doubt that. I, I doubt don't that think very they much. will. <laughs> Hawthorne beat Collingwood. What this game, game was awesome. One thirty three sixty seven. Not only did they beat them, they kicked their heads in. They this smoked them. An absolute smashing by the Hawks. One thirty three to sixty seven. Uh, it was wet, it was cold, it was miserable. Melbourne, Saturday afternoon. Not for Hawks fans. Yeah. And Hawks fans are all about it. This was a great game, Stats Boy. You got some stats? It actually was an awesome game. Hawks were just amazing from the offset. They were, they were just like, oh, it's not a wet weather game. Collingwood, from it, the it outset rather than the offset? Oh, yeah, yeah the outset. That's definitely right. Uh, yeah. They had 69 inside 50s to 37 for Collingwood, so nice. dominated that. And they've got 133 points in the wet. Like anything over 90 points in the wet is unbelievable. 133. Collingwood pretty much gave up in the second half. Uh, Ginevan would just had the ball on a string. It was so. It was actually really fun to watch because uh, Hawthorne, when they're playing well, they just seem like all these. They're all just little brothers. Yeah. They're, like they're they're very funny. They get into the crowd. They don't care what anyone else thinks. We're like we're awesome, and they're just it's having like, fun. Yeah, I love like Warple, Newcomb, Impy. Oh. Like they're all fun. Yeah. Like they're Jack's all kind of fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. Ginevan obviously Dan Brosio just adds like a fun little aspect to them. Yep. Um. Then you got old man Bruce. Just like, yeah, Bruce. Bruce would be so out of depth because they're so young, the Hawks, and they're they all do all these TikToks every Connor day. Nash, He's like, what is Donald, this? Donald, like they're just fun. Did you see our uh, buddy? So they said, uh, "Go Haw Hawk." Uh, they call themselves H O K, and Buddy's like, "What's Hawk?" Yeah, that's what he commented on the thing. So, uh, Buddy's a bit confused by the uh, the modern lingo, apparently. He's a bit old man. Maybe old man. So him, buddy. him and Bruce are like, oh, I don't know what's going on, but Bruce is loving it. Around uh, he actually became the uh, most games ever by a rookie. Uh, Picked player rookie draft in the rookie draft. So I think it was how many games has he had played? Over three, two ninety two or something like that. Yeah, nice. yeah, it's a good effort. So you're telling me that there's still a chance for you, stats man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re mature age recruit, why not? Nice. Same as you, I reckon. Very yeah. left. Route. I mean, I'm basically Michael Barlow but with a beard. <laughs> yeah, not from Shepparton. Yeah, all right. Yeah, why not? All right, actually, you could be a uh, fair legend. McDonald had four in this one. Bruce had four. Yep. The Wizard had three. Guinea kicked two. The Pies kicked. Was it one goal for the first half? One goal, twelve, and then they kick seven and seven straight, not seven and seven straight like uh, shots on goal. But they were one goal, twelve to start the game. They were just stinking it up. Dar I know everyone's getting to Darcy Moore. Kane Corns is getting to Darcy Moore. Then every show in the world, but I have to as well. I just want to jump in on this bandwagon. He has been horrible. Can you drop a skipper? That's the big question because he. No, I'd ask him <laughs> to sleep in the same bed as his missus first. That is a weird. Then... That was weird, actually. There was more people talking about that than his footy. That was a weird, weird uh, thing. I can kind of see their point though, right? Like a lot of their thing is like, oh, you know, separate beds, you know, they're probably rocking on very different. <laughs> I did not uh, think we were going to talk about this. Article. Very different uh, time frames. Yes. Like the way they operate, right? Yeah. The Darcy Wells got training really early, no doubt, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. They'll sleep better. And she's like, look, hey, we're not going to like just <laughs> adhere to patriarchal norms of like, this is how a family sh like yep. should live. It's like. Yeah, it's fine. Who cares? Is that why he's not playing with well, I'm also just like, <laughs> maybe just sleep in the same bed and see how that goes. Yeah, maybe he'll for play a week or two. I don't know. Just, just saying. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But then, each to their own. Each to their own, exactly. I don't, I don't understand why that was a lie. I actually don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so you, I can't believe you want to drop him. And I'm like, how about we try this first? Just, <laughs> All right, there you saying. go. No. I don't mind that. Nice one. Uh, Hawthorne rule. Yes. This is awesome. They, how are the fan base is feeling after this? Hawks I mean, are like... We're going to play finals. Come on. They, they're starting to believe one week at a time. They, Other than Brisbane and Bulldogs, I'd say they are the most informed team. They they have been amazing the last two months. Leo, who's over on this show, he was absolutely loving it. I don't even know if we'll see him all week after that win. He, he'll be up, absolutely up and about. He's not going to wear a shirt for a month. No. After that. No one wants to see that. Probably. Absolutely losing it. <laughs> so they've just ripped off wins over the really Pies good. and the Dockers. Good teams, uh, yeah. They lose to the Cats. They beat the Eagles. They beat... Tigers, they beat the Giants, they beat the Crom, they Look, beat the 
Lions. Yeah, lots of top like, top eight teams. Yeah. Like if you go back to that power game, which they should have won, mm. they would be absolutely rolling. Basically, after they got smashed by this uh, by the Swans at the game that I was at yeah. with uh, Alex, mm-hmm. they would have if they had have pulled off that power win, it would have been what they could have been top six, two, yeah, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of the last eight of the- nine. Yeah. Instead, it's like seven of the last eight. So. Pretty good. Not bad, not Hawks. Bad uh, for the Pies, fans are just like, They're cooked. Uh, we won the flag last year. I think, yeah, we won the flag last year. We're cooked. They're, they are very sad, though. They're like, why are lots of our good players not playing well? It, it, it seems like Darcy Moore's off. Bobby Hill is very consistent this year. Just a lot of guys not doing too well. The big thing I brought up on the Thursday show, I think I had it written down. I don't know if we actually hit on it. It was how many injuries are too many. Yeah. How yeah. Many are too many injuries, right? So no Cox. McStay comes back this uh, week. Cox isn't a big one. Cox, uh, who else was there? There was like no my My check. check my check's a, a huge one. out, yeah, I think. It's just they're missing dudes mm. and it sort of stinks. The Murphy thing still just stings a lot. So anyway, yeah, Murphy, yeah. good win by the Hawks. Pies fans are like, ah, oh, God, can we make a run? Can we? Can we? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, in terms of their schedule, though, Stats Boy. Yes, let's have a look at If that. you think about the way that the Pies, they have a – very, very, very winnable game this week, though, against Richmond. Oh, they'll win. Yeah, they should win that. Right? They then play Carlton in an incredible game uh, two weeks from now. Actually, I've got tickets to that, yeah. So, Collingwood play Carlton. Then they play Sydney. Then they play Brisbane. Yeah, and then cooked. the final round, they play Melbourne, which could be a win and in game, possibly, for uh, nah, maybe the, I think maybe they the buyers. They're going to lose four of those it's games. Chaos. Brutal. Down at GMHBA, the dogs are alive. Bevo just heard all the slander from the AFL Today Show and went, right, oh. I'm that's back. Enough. That's enough of that. We haven't actually, no one's got bevo in a while because they've been playing well. They have been playing very yeah. well. Uh, oh, there was something. It was bevo. gross, wet, just stinky conditions down there in Geelong. They win at 95-48. Yep. Jamara kicks four goals, including one from about 70 out, Yeah, that was, was unbelievable. Awesome. He is a freak. Uh, the weirdest thing for me was that the Geelong midfield never really – like I talked about earlier how I uh, talked about bogging it down GWS and mm. how they just dragged the Suns into the mud. Yep. Geelong should have done that. Well, there was literal mud the everywhere. And they were trying yeah. their hardest. Yeah. And I talked about this the other day. I love watching games at GMHBA. It's just one of the great game, like great grounds. And you know what I love? A mud game. Well, I it was love fun. footy <laughs> in the mud. That's probably the first game great. in the mud in about And this 10 was years. the best game I've seen in the mud. <laughs> For a really long time. Because all the grounds have really good drainage, apparently, except for Geelong. We spent $400 well, yeah, million yeah. Dollars on, st- uh, like, on taxpayer stadium down there at GMHBA. It was horrible. And it's, a, like, muddier than AJ Gillen Oval in Brunswick. I, exactly. <laughs> like, I play on better... My squid. Yeah. I, I was kicking on Saturday on morning. It was, like, playing on a better ground. I play on better grounds in thirds footy. What, like, what are they doing it down in Geelong? What are they uh, doing? But incredible showing by the Dogs midfield, right? Like, mm. Trelaw was... Everywhere. He was awesome. One touches, three goals. Bont He's was awesome. Lock Richards Australian, was fantastic. Uh, Libba was popping up left, right, and center. This game was fun as if you're a Dogs fan. And they just like, wait, are we going to win the flag? Then even some of the We're moves. We're awesome. Bevo made a uh, lob going back the last couple of weeks. He was awesome. Buku, I think that was Buku his best, ever, played best game I've seen Books play. Uh, things like that. They just, they just Everything was clicking for him. They were taking... Marks in the wet, and then Geelong like, wait, it's wet, it's, it's boggy. We're gonna keep tapping it forward. We're gonna keep tapping. Oh, I don't know how to kick. Jezza was uh, nowhere to be seen, which I'm gonna to touch on later as well. Just other than Tom Stewart, maybe Max Holmes was okay. None of their players stepped up at all. It was a tough one. The dogs looked incredible though. Uh, it's one of those things where you go, the dogs are outside of the eight right now, but they feel confident. But it yeah. feels like they could win the flag. <laughs> No, I don't know. Question mark? No. Right? <laughs> Am I mean, crazy? Uh, I, I want to Mark like, this, Gerald. Round 19, <laughs> Jim's like, dogs flag? Question mark. I reckon you've Boom. said three teams are going to... Let me know in the comments how many teams Jim said is going to win the flag. Or in Sydney. The Sydney, Essendon, Sydney, Bulldogs. Sydney, the Bombers, and the Dogs. They'll play a three-way for three three the flag. Grandpa. It's going to be awesome. That would be cool. Uh, <laughs> how the two fan bases are feeling after this? Like, I love a slog in the mud. This was fantastic. Yeah, it was fun. And, like, watching it on TV, it's just such a throwback to, like, yes... Footy. This is like you can have your namby pamby under a roof, clean footy. I don't you care. You need to go down there. Get in the dirt, boys. <laughs> get in the dirt. Sam De Koning was in like there for two seconds. He had like half a His body full of mud. mud. I'm yeah. like, this is awesome. <laughs> this just reminds me of being freezing cold in Ballarat, yeah. just standing on a wing going, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> you know, just great vibes like that. I love this game. Uh, 
And the dogs smashed them. They I absolutely outplayed them in every facet of the yeah. game. It's the whole second half, Geelong, were like, they're like, oh, we can make a sneaky comeback. And then dogs kick three on them. So, too easy. And, yeah. So the fan base is up. Cats are like, are we frauds? I think it was a bit of a bit of a blip because uh, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. It's, is it a blip if you keep losing at GMHB? That is a worry. But the, f- the good thing about finals is they don't play them there. So sure. that is handy. But play every game of the gym very rare. Like. Geelong fans would be filthy because they never lose down there. That was weird. So it was weird. Uh, and as I said, Dogs fans, they might be 100% up and about winning the flag. Win the flag. <laughs> Port Adelaide smashed Richmond in a game that no one watched. Uh, 116.75. <laughs> the power really good. <laughs> And that's about all I know about this one. Butters also cop more fines. He's now the most fined player in the NBA, yeah. uh, AFL history. NBA. <laughs> AFL history. I'm like Draymond. Yeah, yeah, I said Draymond. Draymond yeah. So he's, who's worse? Uh, Draymond's still I love that. Yeah, Draymond's like, his fines are like four and a half million dollars. Yeah, yeah. And like Butters is like $34,000. Yeah. Still a lot of money. Still, yeah. got, give me 34 grand right uh, now. Lucky so. we don't do fines on this show, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be right <laughs> up against it. <laughs> Who would be leading the. I think it's out of you and Alex, sorry. Definitely, man. <laughs> No, I'm a, I'm a professional. They kicked 16 goals, 20 there, the power. This should be an absolute They should have smoked and, uh, them by more, yeah. Uh, yeah, they fired up in the second half. They kicked nine goals to five, but I, that doesn't show the full story. They probably should have kicked 15 goals they, at least in the second they half. They dominated there. the second half in like a way that's just a little bit silly. Charlie Dixon was incredible. He kicked four goals. Yep. Uh, yeah. Georgie Artis is just continuing his incredible He's tear. a great player. I yeah. love him. No three one really talks well. about him except us. Uh, my beloved C. Rosie, three votes, two goals, <laughs> 24 touches. Yep. Uh, two goals for Willie, Oriel, Rio, Willie Rioli as well. And then the tough part was like you watch this Richmond team, you're like, who is going to kick your goals? And even they don't have anyone. Like, yeah. We don't know. Kaczynski's still like not at AFL level. I don't Troy think. Troy Mansell is just like, oh, Mansell, kick a couple. Yeah, he's he's, he's all right. He's been to be fine, fair. I guess. But yeah. Kaczynski's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. He's not. Good. Even Steely Green only managed one this week. Which oh, is a bit of a he shame. got three last week. He was doing my multi though. Thank you, Steely Green. <laughs> <laughs> um, outside of that though, like just. Butters. Spoke was uh, really good. I had, Horn some Francis didn't quite grab this one by the scruff mm. of the neck like I kind of maybe expected. Rosie had a hip injury at some point as well, Ooh. which is like a bit of a worry considering he was so good in this game. Yeah. I think he'd be right. He'll um, be okay. Outside of that, yeah, Richmond are uh, not good. Port just needed to have a confident win. They, they got the over ship. the line. At home, their fans are like, all right, we're still in the finals campaign at the moment. So And Boke was right. awesome, as you said. Boke, so. yeah. He's, Two fan bases, power like. They're still worried about finals, we but they should this, make it. We yeah. talked about this game on yeah. Thursday's show, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you have to win this by like eighty to like remove any questions. Yeah, you won by like forty-one. Yeah, it was a bit inaccurate. They have had a lot of games this year where they kick inaccurately. So if they if they want to have a good finals campaign, they need to kick a bit more accurately. There is a level of AFL team. If you're someone like the Power, where you just go Richmond in our sides. Put him to the sword and just absolutely mm. delete that. They team, haven't right? put anyone to and the sword all year. Yeah. Yep. Tigers fans are like, count the rings. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get number one draft pick. Let's care. go. Uh, Sunday, Brisbane, Sydney. This game oh, was awesome. Game of the Talk about. Second game of the round. Talk about worms. Yes. This is a great worm. <laughs> just the, up down, the up down. Up down, up down. This one's just like, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> uh, 79, the Brisbane Lions beat the Sydney Swans, 77. Uh, Great start by Brisbane, which brings up the question about Sydney and their slow starts once again. This costs, it's costs fine. Enough. We keep winning. Not if you don't win. Well, if they literally just kicked a couple more goals, they would have won this. The first quarters are such a worry. I think they're the second or worst first quarter team in the comp, but they're first. It's wild. It was five goals to one Brisbane in this first quarter. Alex would have been tearing his hair out from the show, obviously, uh, what, up there. What, what hair? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Bang. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Shots. Uh, <laughs> brap, brap, brap. I put in here that uh, another one that Sydney fans won't want to hear, but the big O, Oscar McInerney, I think he beat, or well, in terms of the stats, he beat Brody, Brody Grundy in the ruck, which is very hard to do. He had 22 disposals. Uh, how much would he been paying for 20 plus Oscar McInerney? A lot. 13 contested possessions, which is which was the most contested possessions on the ground from the big R. So pretty cool. He had a couple of like big possessions late in that game mm. as well. A couple of wing. clearances, yeah. And you're like, what is going on? <laughs> what is he doing? He had, like, he had two different like Gumby moments. Yeah, like, he always has Gumby. Big o, but uh, outside of that, he was like he was good. way more influential than you would have ever yeah. have thought. Yeah. Uh, this was a really fun game though. Every time like you're like, here we go, Swans are going to win. Mm. And when they went forward right at that last gasp moment you're like Almost. they're still gonna win yeah yeah and whoa Goulden sends it in so, and then it just got stuck Goulden was Goulden yeah awesome with it. Warner was really good he, I wrote down here Heaney he was still okay like but for his high standards 
he didn't have enough impact on this game. I think I think he kicked, did he kick zero two in the end. Usually, uh, you want him to get get at least one on the scoreboard and have a few more goals between Warner, Gooden, and Heaney. So that was a bit of a worry. Well, I think this was also one of the games that we're like lock in the over, and it mm. goes seventy nine seventy seven. Yeah. It probably goes Just, well short, right? So like yeah, one fifty six. So. Yeah, two yeah. good defenses. So two pretty good defenses mm. turn out and actually kind of dictated this game. Yep. Uh, McCluggage was incredible in this game. 26 and three, three goals. goals. Yeah. Awesome. Joey Duckett's kicked three. Rayner had a goal at the start of this game where he gave it the old one-two skidoo good, to yeah. like three different swans. You're like, oh, my God. And then went, I could hand this off, but this possession is so good, <laughs> I'm going to keep going and bomb it from 50. Exactly. It was rad. Why not? Um, you know who they really, really missed? Friend of the show. James Robert, yeah. James a Robert. bit of pressure. Just does a little bit of the dirty work. Just yeah. does all the dirty yep. work does our man James Robottom. Cheeks, yeah. All my good mate Cheeks. <laughs> just the way that he pressures the ball, like that sort of halfback flank moment of like, oh, Robottom's there again. They're forced to stoppage or yep. they're forced to turnover. They didn't have that dude this week. Like the fact that Jake Lloyd went out and kicked the goal late. You're like, That's oh, crazy, yeah. He's kind of meant to be doing that, like a little bit more of the pressure thing. Mm-hmm. He had 14 touches outside of that, not much else. Chad Chunley Warner had 20 touches and yeah, he probably needed a little goal. bit more from him. But he it's was like, still, he was still good. He set up a lot of goals. Logan McDonald managed one goal, eight disposals. Just mm. wasn't quite good enough. Hey, no. McLean won as well. And Charlie, Charlie, gets off for being a good bloke. Apparently, and three yeah. weeks down to zero, kicks essentially the game winning goal. Yeah. The and uh, Archie was the, the, Archie, the last one. He was really Archie good. kicks the, the last CLR. goal, yeah. but Cameron's the one that put them back in yes. there. You're like, oh, my God, they're going to get in, yep. get over the top. And off they went. Well, like, this game was psychotic. Awesome. It was great. Zorko was fantastic. 29 touches in the end. Chris Fagan summed it up brilliantly. He said it was Rafa versus uh, uh, Roger Federer. It was, like, it was like the two best teams in the comp, two best players in the comp going head to head. I thought I was a Does really that make cool. the Blues like Leighton Hewitt? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. He's banged the Blues there. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, Nick Kyrgios just he's a bit curious, angry like, on the side. Nah, shut up. It is going, man. Like, give me a <laughs> shot, eh? Or Bernard Tomic. I don't know. Nah, Bernard Tomic's Ooh. not good. <laughs> You're doing doughies on the Gold Coast. Yeah. <laughs> With What's no that? license, yeah. <laughs> Amazing work. Uh, yeah, I think that makes the Blues Andy Murray. just like Andy Murray, yeah, he probably. Just a bit goofy looking. They haven't won anything. <laughs> Beloved by his own fans and no one else. Knighted by Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, so, worried about the Swans? Uh, no. Like you said, I, know, I am a tiny bit worried about that clutch gene because obviously uh, they've lost, what is it, uh, four games by un, uh, a total of nine points. But then you look on their flip side of that, they've only lost those four games by under nine points. So a lot of those games could have been one kick and they would have won. So Sydney fans, you're on top. They can still be calm. Every year, probably the last, I don't know, I'd say seven years, their top team still loses games. That's okay. Play this game at the SCG, they win. Exactly. Exactly. They might have only won by a couple of goals, but they would have won. And if this is a final, where will it be played, Stats Boy? Definitely the SCG because they're on exactly. top of the ladder. Yep. So I'm not worried. Yep. So if I'm a Sydney fan, which I am heartily am, <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, no worries at all. Still going to win the flag. Okay. Lions fans are like, we're the best form team. Seven in a row, isn't of it? Of the comp. Mm. So check this out. Yeah. They'll be quietly confident. Now. They were second for a minute well, there before confident. Carlton won, uh, <laughs> which is a remarkable rise. You might remember Stats Boy. They were 16th in the letter at one point this season. They were yeah. also 13th through a big chunk of the season. They were stinking it up. And then they just went, whapang, check this out. They've been awesome. Off we go. So... Happy days there. So if you go back to round six, where do you think Brisbane were? Uh, 15th? Uh, they were 12th then. Oh, so if you oh, want to go a bit low there. I got nine. round eight. <laughs> I can't remember that or back that far. 13th. Like, this oh, is 13th. It, but okay, they yeah. sort of sat right there. They're three and five. So much so much further behind the eight ball than you could possibly imagine. Yep. Oh, and nice. you now go, cool, round 19, boom, you're 11, six, and one. So they've, awesome. won, they, they've lost one game what, since then. It's crazy. Ridiculous. Awesome. So, yeah, Lions fans feeling good. Freo, they deleted their bunny team Melbourne once more. Oh, again. 116.66. Hilarious. Stats boy. Give some stats. Yeah, a few uh, ones for Freo. So Freo fans will be loving this. They dominated in the middle. This is, I think, the most one-sided clearance battle we've had all year. 47 to 16. Melbourne only had 16 clearances the entire game. You got, uh, I wrote down here, Brayshaw and Sarong were awesome. I think they both had over 28 touches. Then you got the double ruck combo. Everyone uh, doesn't like it in Supercoach, but when it's in an actual game, Luke Jackson and Sean Darcy together against Fortune, uh, yeah, very young ruck for Melbourne, and then Petty, who's too undersized against them, they dominated. And that, that was the difference in this game. So their clearances, uh, I think in the first half, they had four. 
Yes. To 26. That is... Oh, that's probably... That's I think that'd be, that'd be the worst all year. absurd. West Coast would get more clearance than that. Richmond North, that's that's wild. So their combo of Brasher and Sarong, they looked awesome. Hayden Young was really good in this one as well. Yep. Uh, you had a miss not going... A uh, missing... I think I called this on Thursday's show. I think he Big did. Big miss game. Boom. Four goals, yeah. Uh, off he went. Love that. Sonny Walter kick four as well. That's, yeah, Sonny Walter. Well, I reckon that's his best game in about three or he four was years. He, absolutely. He's finally team. got some goals. Uh, that's that's what he's in the team for, so awesome. Broke my heart that I think Michael Frederick didn't get one. Oh. Well, it was in your multi. It might have been in my oh, multi, just saying. Uh, but that's, like, this is it. This is the thing for Freo. You have that combination of a miss, Tracy, and Sturt, and between them, they kick 10 goals. That's that's awesome. awesome. When, exactly at, when they're their best, that's And then you have Michael, Michael Walters just chucking four on the top of that. You're like, Lovely. we're winning Lovely. a lot of games if we do this. So, awesome. Uh, this is a fun team. Defensively just put the absolute hurt. Melbourne, was that just a uh, – because they are decent in the wet last week and then it was decent conditions this week, so they didn't play that well? Is that's is I that like, why they I won like, last week? I always like that theory of like heavy legs after a wet Oh, a I wet didn't game. think it like that, but maybe, yeah. Just saying. Maybe. You got a big – so a wet game and then you fly west mm. to take on Freo. Probably not yeah. easy. Tough one. But Melbourne, yeah, I think the belief might be – they were like, oh, we're back. Then the belief's gone again for Melbourne fans, I think. So they're in 10th. They play G- GWS this week, which is an awesome game. So oh. I can't wait for that. So how are the fan bases feeling about this? Frio are just like, yeah, top four. We're good again. We're top four. Yeah, the other Let's week, go. oh, crap, we're not top four. No, we're top four. Yeah, top four. <laughs> top four Frio. Right. That's, they have to be aiming for that now, yeah. Purple haze around my brain. Purple haze. Uh, and then the Ds – yeah, the fan base is just like, uh, just sad moans. Like, they would have been okay if this was close and they'd be like, all right, we've got a bit of belief towards the finals, but they got smoked again. What? They got smashed by 92 and then they got smashed again today. They don't like playing for it. Funny team. Funny team. <laughs> Finally, Blues, nah, Ruse. let's skip this one. Blues, Ruse. Great game, this one. Oh, oh <laughs> I was actually pretty fun. How did we both thing. hate this game? Well, you were actually loving it. You were <laughs> I was very, loving it in the first half because we were You winning. were very loud and lippy. So oh, as a Ruse so fan- mad. Yourself, stats man. Oh, we're going uh, Me, a Blues fan. Yes, yes. Uh, we can just quickly skip to the how are you feeling after this game. The Blues win by 19 points. Yes. I take that almost, like, do whatever you can to win. Carlton have lost two in a row, but the way they came out in this game in the first half, lackadaisical, oh. well, they, you know, they looked all right in the first little North bit. North actually played well. And then the they time. just sort of went flatline yep. for, like, the entire second quarter, yep. essentially. Uh, you still have moments of worry about Charlie's accuracy in front of well, goal. He, he first half four, goals, special, four goals too, but he had a few out in the yeesh. four. First half, he was just rushing it a lot. I'd I'd be a little bit worried with that, but he still kicked four goals. So like, and every time it was going to him, North fans were worried because he's an absolute freak. So. My big worry is the blue, as a Blues fan is that like I think oh he's had a couple of shots from he was really he good, kicked yeah. two goals from set shots at least. Uh, so much of it was chaos ball. And it's like yeah. Mot- Motlop kicked three goals out of Chaos absolutely balls, yeah. nothing, One which kick. is what Motlop's yeah. fantastic at. Like I introduced the squid to Jesse Motlop at Auskick. And oh, it's like, that's right. He's yeah. one of my favorite goal kickers ever. He's nice. one of the best I've ever seen. And the squid's like, oh, my God, you're one of the best goal kickers ever. <laughs> and Motlop's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, let's <laughs> no go. No one's ever said that before. So I'm, like, I'm, trying to, I'm pumping him full of <laughs> yeah. belief. There we go. I'm taking credit that's for why, this win, that's why he's got- <laughs> Three goals, Jay Clements. Boom. How's he, pull, how he pulled that out? Oh, and uh, so Jesse Motlop, th- not a problem, buddy. I've got <laughs> you back. Uh, but so, like, there was a couple of like weird umpiring things towards the end. Like Saad gets a 50 meter penalty, kicks yeah, the goal yeah. to basically seal it. It probably was there. Yeah. Um, but Carlton grabbed this one by the scruff of the neck in the third quarter, kicked seven goals in that one. They kicked six goals straight, I want to say. Yep. So as a fan of this, though, you just don't want the slow starts against a plucky. I mean that in the nicest way. No, probably. you can say it. So, because you can fine. call other teams plucky and it's like a slap. Yeah. But North are plucky in the good way. Well, we, we always start really well. Uh, still won the cl- – like, North – as a North fan, I'm just really happy with the midfield. The midfield is elite. We're, we're, obviously, Carlton are one of the best midfielders. You've got uh, Cripper, you got Walsh, you've got so many so good role players in there. And North still won the clearances, even, even though it was a loss. Just there, There's a lot of positives in there for a North fan. It was second versus 17th, and we pushed you right to the end. So I'm pretty happy with that. A lot of people uh, – yeah, Carlton fans don't get too excited because uh, – yeah, Jim was pretty excited before, but got over the line. In the past, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, Carlton would have lost that type of game. So that's a good sign for Carlton. <laughs> How do we win this? How many rocks did we play? Uh, one. There you go. Pitto didn't play, yeah. And De Koning was Tom playing De off one leg. is yeah. an extra midfielder. And it's like, this is what I hate so much about, oh, but Pitto, clearance battle. 
Tom the Koenig taps it to himself. You lost the clearances. Nelson months yeah. is it? You also yeah. lost the clearances and you won anyway, so it doesn't exactly. matter. Yeah. Just win the damn game. I don't <laughs> care about the clearance, but, oh, but it's correlated. No, it's not. Yeah. Anyway, good Sheezel stuff. was amazing in this. Sheezel the commentators the whole time were like, put a man on Sheezel. Obviously, you got to have a line in the end, but he was amazing. He had, let me just quickly get the, uh, 35 and two goals. That yep. He's just an absolute freak. He even bodied Cripper on one, which I thought, he's so skinny. I don't even know how he did that. He's a freak. But uh, I am worried about TDK because he was so good at times, but he kept like getting injured. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, what's happening? I think it's he like might be out next week. And like, just this it, is the thing. His foot is cooked. Apparently. When you have two Ruckman, it's like, I think if you've got two Ruckman, you've got none. That's kind of my vibe. <laughs> well, except for Freo. They're going to with two Ruckman. They're fine, but they're Freo. <laughs> they're just, they're weird. Um, <laughs> but this is the good thing. You just go, all right, we're going to throw Pito in next week and hope for the best, right? Yep. And, off you go. Uh, so the fan base is Carlton. Like that feels like almost a loss of a win because yeah. you should have been better. You should have smashed North, but you didn't. But it was always a weird, dodgy game. I'm more worried because after two losses, they should have been rip roaring and ready to go. Yeah, and just absolutely delete us, probably. So yeah, and Roos fans, you're feeling good and plucky. Yeah, <laughs> plucky. Yeah, that's a good word. Tipping results. We both had the same tips this week. So six. Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That'll do. That's, it was a tough round with uh, who was the upset? So we didn't tip Brisbane. We didn't tip Brisbane. We didn't uh, tip Adelaide. So. Adelaide. I should have tipped Adelaide. Uh, oh, well. Outside of this, though, I hereby make the decree that I'm just going on vibes. You should, I think. Funniest outcome possible. Yep. That's it. Done from here on I out. I like it. I want to see your tips online. Next All right. Week. Full credit to the boys. The best team of the round we saw this week. Brisbane. They beat the best team we've seen in 150 <laughs> years in the Sydney Swans. Yes, it was at the Gabatoir, yep. but the way they did it, the belief they had at the end of that game. Clutch. At different points. To have that lead, to get it dragged back, to have the Swans just reel you in yep. and get up pretty handily, and then to go, do we have the wherewithal? Do we have the heart? Do we have the grit? They are at home. Off they went. They did. They Too fought good. back. They lost the lead. They got it back. They lost the lead. <laughs> got it back. They held on to win. I loved that showing from the Lions. It's hard, though. It was at home. It's one of those, no, they like, do great, that yeah. at the SEG and we're like, whoa, yeah. watch out. Yeah. But you can only beat who you're playing exactly. in front of you at home. Honorable mention is obviously going to go to Hawthorne. Yeah, I was going to give an honorable Incredible mention. Incredible game. Uh, they just put the pies to the sword. Everyone thought like if they won, it was going to be really close. And they were like, nah, we're nah. like 10 times better than the pies. They're like shush idiots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Smash them. <laughs> they smashed them. Stats boy. Uh, it's got to be the Bulldogs this round. They literally went to Kadinya Park down in Geelong. Silence. They'll just booze the whole game because Geelong fans are absolutely brutal down there. So biased. They saw the ground. <laughs> um, Richards after the game goes, oh, I didn't know in the AFL we'd have to play on grounds like this. He like had a go at them. They beat them. They just beat them in all categories. Libba was loving the uh, mud. They just got so many guys like, oh, I love the they mud. They train on the Western Oval. Exactly, yeah. Like they're like, this is great. This yeah. is like at home. <laughs> it was, oh, they, we've got mud at home. Yeah, like, they were laughing. They were loving it. They Bulldogs as well. No one would have given them a chance. That's their. They've won their last two times. They've gone down there now, which nice. no team. I think before that they hadn't won in like twenty years down there. So they'll be up and about. Bulldogs fans finally a couple wins in a row, but they're gonna drop off next week. But for this week, they were awesome. Best I think team. the cool part about about it was the balance, right? So sending Lob back. Yep. And no, still no Liam Jones. Less right? forwards, yeah. So you literally just go Jamara Norton. Yep. Do your thing. Mm -hmm. Cody Waitman's like, I'll pop up. He and was do great some as, stuff well, as well. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Days. They didn't get a massive Riley West game. No, they, they didn't did enough. Either, yeah. He was like there and being a presence. They just looked awesome. Yeah. And this is why I'm like, hey, dogs flag question mark. Their depth. Like, it was on just, show as well. Like when they play like that well, you're like, that is infuriating. Because mm. can you just do that every week? Yeah. Just do that every week and everybody, dogs for real. But because the dogs don't do that every week, people go dogs frauds. Yeah. It's so tough. Two weeks in a row, though, they've beaten Carlton. They've beaten Geelong. They're, they're back. Proven us are, they, wrong. are they back? We're going to find out this week. I don't they? think they are. They'll somehow they'll lose again and then cook it. They'll play the Swans this week. It's going to be awesome. Oh, okay. Best on ground it. of the week. Best player we saw. I just love Jamara's goal. Just wanted to say that. Just, just best on ground for, for his goal. I like that. I love just going, <laughs> I'm 70 out. I'm kicking it. It was a real buddy, yes. Just check this out. That was a bang. miles out. Uh, but also Trelaw. We mentioned him earlier. 31 touches, yeah. three goals. All Australian. But impactful. Yes. Trelaw will sometimes have games where he's sort of floating Gets around. handballs, yeah. Just like, hey, a lot of handball receives and then off we go again, boys. Uh, this was much more of a- uh, Three goals in the wet. In the in behind the play as well, a lot of the times, mm. like sort of marshalling the dog's defense and the midfield. Quarterback. And then getting forward and kicking three snags out of nowhere. Not a known goal kicker. No, Trelaw. no. And that was fantastic. I love it. I've got a lot of time for Adam Trelaw. I think he's a fantastic footballer. Gets a lot of like weird denigration for no real reason beyond he left the pies and just and doesn't have- the pies have, didn't treat him very well, yeah. And doesn't have like, you know, the best, uh, it's like Sam Walsh 
and Trelaw sort of come from these things of like, how good is your usage sort of like, mm. right? And Trelaw was that good this game. I loved it. Three yeah. votes, a Trelaw. I liked it. Stats boy? Oh, it's going to be Benny Keys. I think this is the best individual game all year. Everything that the Crows did heading forward was through Ben Keys. He was awesome. 22 disposals, five goals, 12 score involvements, eight tackles. I think he had five score involvements just in the last quarter alone. It, Every time the Crows were getting it down there, he was sending them up. He, he was getting tackled, getting straight back up. It was just a man possessed. I, I don't know if he had the Space Jam ball off uh, or who, who's been playing bad, Max or well, Ben King or something like that. Uh, some play, he kicked five goals. He's a small guy, just did a bit of everything. He's one of those guys, I think he got dropped by Brisbane. Then he, he was a captain for a few games at Adelaide. He's had an awesome career story and he's just playing his best footy. I love watching him play at his best. Five goals. As I said, he's the Dermot Brereton of Bailey Fritches. I still don't understand what that means, but... Some people out there will. The Dermot Brereton of Bailey Fritches. It's not hard to like, so keep that, up. Does that mean it's, he's in between those two? No, he means he's the Dermot Brereton of Bailey Fritches. Okay, okay, that's what. Okay, okay. It's not, not rocket surgery, buddy. If, Come I, can't, on, figure I don't this know out. if I'm tired or something. I don't know. I, I don't understand that. Old mate, no mates. Two meter Peter. He's got no mates. He's oh. like, what? A, you're playing that absolute Gumby <laughs> old man, Toddley Goldstein. <laughs> they played caddy for Two meter Peter. Well. It's just like, dude, I won the best and fairest two years yeah. ago. You're going against an Adelaide team. We need to kick some more stags. Yep. Goldie was 50 per, 57% of on-field games. Oh, like. well, that Draper. You're but playing yeah. half a player. That's not good. That's not good. Just play two-meter Peter and throw him up forward and let Draper run wild. Mm. Like, what are we doing? Like, it just, it's gross. <laughs> also, old mate, no mates. This was my favorite. This is funny. I like this one. The Pies cheer squad. Yeah. You can't get into it when you're 60 points down. <laughs> no, the, no, no, the Pies cheer squad, yeah, they want to oh, fight I was Jack talking Ginnivan. about Ginnivan, yeah. That's fine. They're all my no mates because Ginnivan gives the old go to sleep. Yep. On top of that, though, the Pies cheer squad had a typo in their banner. I oh, love it. They always I every... love a typo in a banner. That's oh. why I, like, I call them the bomb rays because, like, literally, <laughs> I want to say, what is it? Tw- is that what? I didn't even know why I want to say the bomb rays ray. from, I want to say, 30 years ago. I didn't even know that was the reference. Their own cheer squad like had it written bomb, bomb ray. rays. <laughs> They had the R in front of the E. That's hilarious. I didn't, just, I didn't know that's why you called them. There that's it. That's so the Pius rest. Cheer Squad had a typo where they had G with an apostrophe after it. <laughs> the uh, the GMC. Is that what they're saying? So <laughs> that's not where the apostrophe goes. What are you, what are you, what are you here, doing? Here at the ground? And I'm just saying, like, it might be a little bit too much to expect Pies fans to be able to spell <laughs> or use grammar correctly. They're not helping their stereotype. But I don't know. Here at the G apostrophe, a rainy day to storm the Hawks and blow them away. That's where they lost the game. That just sucks anyway. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's that's Doesn't gross. Make sense. That's gross negligence of the English language. <laughs> just like do a haiku or something at this point. That's that's just <laughs> shocking. I don't know how to do but haiku. to have it here at the G, apostrophe G. So stats boy, yes. writer. Yes. Right. Hello. So you use an apostrophe <laughs> to indicate essentially things that have been deleted or of course, moved. Yes. That uh, the apostrophe is replacing. Yeah. If you're putting it after the G, it makes absolutely it no that's sense. That's not a thing, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Learn to spell Pies, man. I mean, that boat probably sailed a long time ago for most of you. It's part of the part of the contract in you when you uh, sign up. It's just a tough one. But anyway. <laughs> That's funny. Spell, I didn't even see that. Magpies Cheers Cheer Squad. Nice. Boom. Stats boy. Uh, I'm just gonna call out Jeremy Cameron. He was horrible. I was uh, with some Cats fans on Saturday night. He was shirking out a contest, he was pulling out a marking contest. Everything about him was just seemed like he didn't care in this game. Usually you see Jezza, he's skinny, but he can crash a pack. He can push up the ground and get some touches. Every time he pushed up the ground, he was getting bumped off the ball. He is skinny, but usually he's still got that core and he just looks so disinterested in this one. I know it was tough conditions, but Jezza usually can bring that magic even in tough conditions. Obviously, Tom, no Tomahawk uh, is a bit harder in their forward line, but Tomahawk couldn't do anything in it those type of conditions. much more like he was injured, like carrying Maybe, something. Maybe, yeah. Right? And it's like, it just, he just seemed really, really off. So so I believe the word you're yeah. looking for there is tentative. A tentative. And that's why I've got old mate no because they're like, Jezza, we're all not going that well, but usually you're our star player. Please, they're just on the bus. Jezza, what are you, what are you doing? You're usually our star. He, maybe he was working too hard at his farm. Possibly. Maybe. Because he Strange probably something is, lifting a cow. Yeah, may, yeah, possibly. Is that what you do with the cows? Yeah, lift them, lift them yeah. Chuck them. I, I just know about tipping them. Yeah. T- yeah. Tipping Possibly. cows. What are you doing tonight in Ballarat? Tipping, tipping cows. cows. <laughs> ah, good stuff. So old mate no mates is when you get on the bus, obviously, and he's yes. like, what was that? And Jezza gets on and everyone's like, Come on, right? mate. Are you all right? You all right? Get Come some on. sleep at the farm, mate. Uh, and yeah. No know. good. Right, last one. Why I can't stand. Look, I think this gets buried a lot. This year has been absolutely fantastic in terms of football. And I hate that 
this year of football and how close it has been, as we've talked about, 2 through 18 is still only separated by, what, three wins yeah. at this point it's in the awesome. season, which is absolutely insane. Yep. Um, there is absolutely no way the eight will be solidified until like the last round. We've got an incredible feast of footy over the last five weeks of this season. It's going to be awesome. So everything else, like remember how we fixed score reviews at the start of the year? Oh, no one's talked about it. We fixed it. I forgot about that. We fixed it because we arced up. <laughs> I forgot even about it. We that. haven't fixed umpiring yet. No. I don't know if Lanning will ever. So do we have to keep ever... arcing up about that, do we? I, I don't want to. <laughs> we will. haven't fixed commentators either. But uh, they've been okay. what we saw in this weekend, we had Paps, we had Nicholson, we had uh, Jason Bennett. Yep. Because obviously with some of the other folks. Daisy was off, on a couple of games. Daisy was doing some more stuff. Loved it. It's been cool. I like that we sort of need our – we need to push our commentators to be better. Yep. It is a profession. That's what it is. You need to be better at your job. BT, I don't think, has tried to be better at his job. No, he's the stayed the same now. for the last five years. Same yeah. thing goes for James Brayshaw. It's just like, anyway. <laughs> thing is, talking about that sort of stuff, I hate it because the footy has been so fun. Can, yeah. You know what I love? Muddy footy. You know what I don't like? Talking about umpires. Yeah. I mean, Simple as we that. We shouldn't have to do Muddy that. footy is awesome. And so what is that? That's suburban footy. That's the heart <laughs> of the game. That's the grit. That's the soul. It's what it's all about. You know what isn't? Moaning about umpires. You What's a free kick anymore? It's very exactly. annoying. We shouldn't have to say that. It yeah. stinks. Yep. Can we just get it to a level that it all works? Anyway, I can't stand it. Just <laughs> go. Anyway, stats boy. I agree. Uh, I'll quickly, honorable mention for why I can't stand is just the ground in GMHB. Just just a bad look on our game. I, I like the- I It was it. fun. I love it. It was fun, but I just don't get why we had a I'm muddy ground in chaos. AFL. Like, I I'm, love having a muddy ground in the <laughs> AFL. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Maybe every second ground could be just muddy and they'll be making more fun. I don't know. I, I want us back on Morabin. I want us at Princess <laughs> Park. GMH but Western Oval. We'll go back to Windy Hill. Yeah. I don't even know Windy the, Hill. No, is you, it still there? Yeah, no, I, I played great. a few games. It was good fun. So I don't know. Yeah. Go at AJ Gillen at, in Brunswick. Yeah. <laughs> Knock over the screen. <laughs> but my real wife can't stand. Just some Carlton players celebrating like they were playing a top team. Matty always given given this one going, pointing to the ground. Oh, this is my house. This is my mate. You're playing north. This we're second last on the on the uh, ladder. Good on you, mate. You kicked a goal against the second last team, and then Charlie's going. These ones going, mate. You playing on Griffin Low? He hasn't played for eight months. Just calm it down. Calm it down, Carlton fans. That's what, uh, no, not even Carlton fans. They they can be excited as uh, as you can. Carlton players, calm it down. Just uh, relax a little bit. I'm being a salty North fan, of course, but. I hadn't noticed. Yeah, but you don't have to get that fired up. They were more fired up against North than some other teams, which I don't know, just weirded me out a little bit. Did That's, they win? I'm just yeah, yeah. They definitely won. <laughs> just checking. So oh, so Carlton won. Okay, I, I, yeah. You're the better team. Nice, I'm I'm nice. I'm, uh, I'm I'm all right. Just saying. So I just need to get that out. I need to get that. AFL out. Today hosts uh, <laughs> whose team won this week? Oh, that's me. Only you. Only yeah. me. Super coach wash really quickly. Big 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 week. I think yeah. for some players. I think a lot of people's teams would have had a really rough week. I reckon. Oh, I've gone all right this week. I, I think, think some of the average total points because like if you look at the massive scores, it's like Ben Keys. Yep. Member member Berry. Even Trelaw is only owned by 2.8% of Heaney, coaches, which is crazy. Heaney and Grundy. On Ed the- Richards only 2.4%. Yeah. You've got Sinclair at a massive one. He is owned by 9.1%. Uh, Tinglish had a big, big, big bounce back with 139 and Sarong yes. had a big one too. But there you're on, well, it's basically Sheasel, yeah, Sheasel, English and Sarong in the top big name super coach 10 players. basically above yep. that sort of like high percentage ownership. So yep. I do wonder if it's going to be a little bit of uh, compression at the top end scores. Be interesting to sort of see. But I think, like, Ginevan rips up for 137. <laughs> no one has him, though. Ray Shaw, 137. Love that. Lockie Whitfield was really, really good yeah, this I game. Him, a yeah. lot of kick-ins, too, 137. Um, Jaden Hunt came out of absolutely what? nowhere and had 138. That's wild. Zorko rips up 129. But my favorite is Sam Flanders. Stupid, sexy Flanders. 128 again has not dipped below 100. Only player all year. All year. Yeah. Awesome. He yeah, was really close good. last year with 104, but still. Heaney and Grundy really disappointing. 72 each. Billy Dowling, another 80 plus score. You'll love that. So I had him on my field this week. I was very happy. Sean Manor from heaven. What did he end up on? 95. Oh, he's back. You're my Bloody beloved even. boy, Sean. Three weeks in a row, he's been good. I love it. The uh, Manor from Werribee. Charlie <laughs> ends up with 106. Kerno, love that if you drew, uh, draft, uh, brought him in a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yep. Especially with the rank and sort of outage, 106 from him is pretty handy. Very nice. Uh, Lawson Humphreys, another 61. Which will help his uh, price very, go up. Very, very yes, handy. Yes. Outside of that, like, I think. Yeah, Dacos 106, Butters only 89, Woe Errol 108, 94 for Sam Walsh for me. I've had a good week, I just realized. Yeah, it's a bit, of, a bit of a weird one. So I think it ended up around 2,354. I've got 2476. I think it's my best week all year, so I'm, I'm happy. So you better hear all about that yes. on the official AFL Supercoach 
show tomorrow. But I think there's a bit of a lesson there as well. Sicily had like 123, Tom Stewart 121. Like, bit of a lesson. Primos are your, primos. Yeah, stick with them. Stick with them. They're primos for a reason. Yes. Like, Come don't on. burn all four. Especially Stewart. Lots of people got rid of him and he's been really good. Nice one. All right, that'll do the AFL Today show for today what and for this shock. week. It's been a classic, I reckon. Yeah. It's been a swear in the middle of there that's been <laughs> nah, worked out. they won't know that. Ah, just got to shine a light on us. That's <laughs> uh, But, you know, look, we had a lot cover, to cover off and it was a really fun week. And this is it. Mm. Love the footy. Need more footy. Want to talk about footy. Yeah. Don't want to talk about umpires. Uh, but we'll be back for Wednesday's Midweek Madness show, which is always a good one. Great. I believe we'll have a guest on for that one too. Lovely. Uh, thank you to the Stats Boy for jumping in tonight. Thank you. Very good fun. Uh, big no now. thanks to Alex for the no show. Uh, oh, we're going to go to Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> jealous, of course, I'm jealous. on holidays like for two weeks after Oh, no. Thursday no, show, no, so no we'll swears on the show. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Stats Man. <laughs> I don't uh, remember some... to smash a like. Across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. You can get around the AFL Today Show, the Cricket Today Podcast, Football Today Podcast, NBA Australia talking all things boomers in the lead up to the Olympics this week, NFL Australia, we're in pre-season almost, hold all tickets as well. Get around them on YouTube, Facey, Instagram, TikTok, X, and of course all of your podcast apps. Like, review, star, and subscribe, or we'll send Stats Boy around to your house to just be weird. Yep. Just be weird. Cop it. All right, get around all of those shows like... Uh, who kicked the first goal this week? We actually saw a couple, I think. Uh, there was somebody in the... One of your North guys, uh, Hanson. Yeah, Hanson Jr. Hansen debut Jr. goal. Debut goal. Yeah, it was, it was really good. The North boys got around him, get around all those shows, just like the Ruse getting around Hanson Jr. That, that was pretty good. What a that, was, that was a snag. I'm just <laughs> it was a good kick. Yep. So I'm, this is why I'm in this chair, stats boy. And you're <laughs> over there. All right, that's it. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember... Footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.